guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be doing a few random, very unrelated things, <laughs> but things that I have on my list that I need to get done. The first being setting up the Christmas tree in the Hartley. I'm so excited to do that. Uh, we also got some beautiful caladiums in that I wanna show you. I will show you all the varieties and then we're gonna be placing a few in the house. Uh, and then the last thing we're gonna do is set out some bird feeders. So I haven't cleaned or prepped any of my feeders for winter yet. And you know, the birds have had plenty to forage from. We've had a really long fall. In fact, they still have some to forage out here, um, but I do want to have everything ready. I got a gorgeous one from Gardener's Supply last winter and I never got it out because, well, you know, I can't blame every, everything on pregnancy, but I was pregnant and having a baby last winter. So I had other things on my plate. Um, before we head out to the Hartley, I did want to give you a peek into the studio to show you these caladiums. Oh my goodness. Look at these beautiful plants. They are so gorgeous. Just ignore the mess everywhere else in here. Just look at these beautiful things. <sighs> okay. Oh, oh, Russell, what are you doing in here? You're not supposed to be in here. <laughs> come here. Come on, you can come in the Hartley with me. Hoi. Russell can be in here when I'm in here, but I don't really like him to be in there without me. He doesn't really mess with my plants, but I just, especially with the caladiums, I wanna keep them safe for now. Okay, so let's go into the Hartley. The tree is already sitting there in its box and I've got a three-way splitter. In fact, let's do this really quick. I know I need to split off of the power in the garden we just recently got done for Benjamin, his butterfly garden, and this is where <laughs> need to this is such a menagerie thankfully everything's led so much easier than it used to be okay there's that and this needs to go in here okay so the power comes right back here oh i can't wait till this is a garden you guys like an actually designed planned out garden it's gonna be so fun and the power comes right through here and into the hartley where it just is gonna get echoey but oh Look at how beautiful. Oh, I love it so much, so much. So here's the deal with the Hartley tree. I actually decided to still put the tree up in here, but we're not gonna decorate it. Um, we decided not to because it's possible that Benny is gonna be able to come in and do this floor this winter. Um, I don't know if that's gonna happen for sure, but it's a possibility, and I don't know at what point that's gonna happen. Um, so I really would like the tree, I would like to be able to pop it down if I need to easily so that it's out of their way. Also, uh, you know, even before that was a possibility, I was kind of going back and forth like should I decorate it we're not going to actually be able to be in here very much to enjoy it we don't have furniture in here yet it's still a powder dirt floor this stuff is going to get so filthy dirty in there should I go to the effort of decorating this year should I like save it for next year and have something super fun to look forward to so I've kind of landed on let's put the tree up get some twinkle lights in here and then just look forward to next winter really decking it out once everything is set in this space. It's just kind of like prolonging the excitement really for me. And just as a quick look around in here, um, I just wanted to remind everybody how we do intend on setting this up in here. This is our water access and our drain. So we're gonna put in a counter right there where I can put like food and cocktail making things and we'll have a sink and then of course plant stuff. I'll have a counter to work on plants. Uh, I'm gonna put my tree over here and then we will have sort of a little, like a small dining area set up here and then plants all the way around. Um, I do want to put a table right in the center here with a big arrangement on it and of course we'll have plants just dotted all over the place in here um, but I do want to keep traffic kind of open from here all the way around the table and then out of course. Um, so anyway just so fun. I have already set this tree up once in here. I couldn't help myself when it was all done this summer. Um, I thought I'm just gonna sneak the tree in there for 10 minutes and I'm just gonna turn it on so I can see what I'm gonna be able to see this winter. And it was beautiful. I bought this tree a couple of years ago and I really do like it. Um, the one I got, the new one for the great room, which I'll talk about it when I show you that in our Christmas day core tour, but I actually got a little bit of a smaller size for that and thought the nine footer would be really pretty in here. And those micro dot lights are just really bright. So I I think they'll really shine in here beautifully. Also, it just started to softly rain. So we're here in the glass house with rain coming down. It's just, I oh, can't even believe it. it. Makes me have butterflies to even say that. I have no idea if this is gonna be level. We'll probably have to work on it a little bit. Ooh. 
Oh, that looks really pretty scale wise. It's about in the center here. I'm going to have to go out and stand outside to see if it's level. It looks level from where I stand anyway, all the way around it. Oh, I love it. But look at this floor. I mean, it's just powder powder still. Can you guys hear the rain? Oh, it is glorious. You know, I did order ornaments for this tree this year. Uh, not enough quite to fill a nine foot tree, so maybe that's another good reason to wait one more year and gather a few more things to put on it and just have that to look forward to as well. Well, I'm gonna make a mad dash to the barn with this box in the rain. Hopefully it doesn't get too wet. I don't have that far to go. Then I think I'm gonna actually go in and make dinner. I didn't realize what time it was and we'll pick up these projects tomorrow. Standing inside the Hartley, this is what the tree looks like. Isn't that gorgeous? <gasps> oh. Good morning, it's a new day. We're starting out here in the studio because it's chilly outside. I wanna give you a closer look at these caladiums. Nice and toasty in here, which the caladiums love. I do hope you enjoyed seeing what that Christmas tree looks like in the Hartley though. It just brings some warmth to that space and it makes me very excited for uh, when we are able to get our light fixtures installed in there uh, because I'll probably have those at just like a, I'm thinking I can have them on a dimmer uh, so I can have just dim light in there all the time throughout the evening. I think that that will be so pretty and decorated or not that tree is gorgeous right there and just makes me so excited so anyway um caladiums need to be watered though before we do anything else so let me get that done it's been a couple of days and they need to stay moist that's like the number one important thing with caladiums is to keep them moist don't let them dry out So I just gave them all a little bit of water, just enough to moisten the soil around their roots, but these are sleeved. And as with all sleeved plants, like poinsettias, caladiums, sometimes you'll find Christmas cactus sleeved, uh, you wanna do one of two things. So you'll either wanna pop the whole plant out of its sleeve, water it, let it drain, and then put it back in its sleeve like that, pretty easy. Or if you have a saucer, like this one right here, you wanna take a knife or a razor blade and you'll want to cut the sleeve like that. Just make sure there's an opening in it so that water has a, a place to escape and you can just put it right down in a saucer like that. The important thing is just to make sure that there's a way for that water to escape no matter what kind of plant you have. I mean even if it's a plant like caladium that likes to be on the moist side you still don't want water collecting at the base of that because it'll just happen over time. I mean you'll keep watering this plant that water will keep collecting and it can eventually rot your plant out. So you want to make sure that you are allowing that water a way to get out. Water can escape right into that saucer. It's just a little bit, but that adds up over time. So I have five different varieties here. This one is called White Wonder. You can see the tag right here. We've actually planted this one out in the landscape as well. And I love the color on this one. So wintry. This one is called Classic Pink. It's kind of like on the pink side of red, red side of pink. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Um, some of the leaves have a little bit more pink in them, but definite Christmas vibes from that one. This one is called Snowdrift. So this one has heavier green veining uh, and less pink. So while the White Wonder is definitely a lot of white and green, there's a little bit of red up there at the base. And there's really very little of that to be found in this one. This one's definitely more of a pure white. This one is called Fast Flash. Now this one for Christmas is definitely my favorite. I love it. I, well, I love the heart-shaped leaves. I love the deep red veining on this one. Kind of like whitish pink spots and just, I don't know, it has this vintage look to it, vintage Christmas. And then this one right here is called Radiance, which you see definite variations in leaves. So like the newer leaves have um, deeper red right here. And as they age out, definitely more pink. 
all really beautiful. And you guys, <laughs> we have so many of them. It looks so beautiful in here. And caladiums, they're really interesting. We've tried them both in the house. Uh, the first time I grew them in the house, I didn't have as much luck with them because I didn't really know how to care for them properly. And now I know like the most important things for caladiums is yes, they do have a dormant season. So when you find them grown on like this for the holidays, uh, they should last you well through Valentine's Day, which is awesome because they've got great Valentine's colors as well. And then they'll start to fizzle out a little bit and you can take the bulbs out of the containers dry them off um, I usually store mine in vermiculite like I do all my other bulbs and tubers and then you can plant them back out in the landscape or in containers once like well past the danger of any kind of frost so for that us that means the end of May and you can grow them again which is really fun um, and I find even though that's kind of a process it's way less fussy than the processes for poinsettias and getting those to recolor again if you can get them to survive the season that's the thing like it's fun to have an alternative to poinsettias because while those are just super classic, um, they can be a little bit more fussy about water. Like these like to just be moist all the time. So it's very easy, especially if you're the type who likes to uh, kind of be a little heavy handed with your water. Uh, this would be a really fun option. Uh, they also, they like bright light. They don't like a lot of drafts. Most houseplants don't. They won't, don't want to be right by a heat register or right by a door where they're going to get blasted by cold air. In fact, like these closer to the door. I try to go through the door really quickly so that I'm not um, blasting them with the cold, frigid outside air. Uh, of course, we'll be moving these soon, but uh, yeah, that's kind of the most important things is to make sure they don't dry out, make sure they just have bright light. It doesn't need to be direct light. Um, but we found with the caladiums, I grew um, a variety called Chinook, uh, and we had it in a spot that I didn't realize got full afternoon sun, and those plants still did fantastic. And I always thought caladiums were like strictly shade. Uh, but those did wonderfully. We had white wonder underneath our mulberry tree one year. One side got shade, the other side got blasted in the afternoon, and those did great too. So it's nice to have, it's kind of like the color blaze coleus. You have a little bit more versatility because you can use them in a sunnier spot or a shadier spot. And for us, high desert where we're so harsh um, and we don't have humidity or cloud cover, I thought for sure they weren't going to be able to handle our sun because, you know, sometimes even the things that say they can handle sun need a little protection, but these kind of they did great. So let me give you a close look here. There's some more white wonders down there. I think I got four of those total. Love those. There's the fast flash. Aren't those just so amazing? I mean, look at the size of these leaves. They're huge. There's the radiance right there. We got the snow drift. Ooh, that one has more pink in it. Look at that. A little more variation. I wonder if that's because it's close to the door. <laughs> And then there's the classic pink right there. I think I already mentioned that all of these caladiums are from the Proven Winners collection. And it's funny, the growing facility that helps us out, you know, growing the bulk of the annuals that we use here, uh, it's called Moss Greenhouses out of Jerome, Idaho. Anyway, she, uh, Jennifer texted us from there and said, hey, I have the most gorgeous caladiums. Can I drop a few by? And we were like, oh, of course, we'd love to have more in our house this year. And so she shows up and like 40 or 45 or something like that caladiums later, we have just this massive amount, uh, which is so fun. So what I wanna do is take a few of these into the house. We're gonna display a few and take care of a few um, over the holidays here, but I would like to give away the rest of them to family and friends. So we will be farming out the bulk of these uh, because there's no way that I need 40 some caladiums in my own home. That's a lot of watering too, so. I initially thought that I was gonna repot some of these before taking them inside, but I think I'm just gonna leave them in their sleeves and take them in just like this. Yeah, so let's take a few in, place them around. I do need to find some sort of box or something to take them in, like a sleeve of some kind, because I can't expose these to what's going on outside right now. It's pretty chilly. I wonder if I just used an empty tub. That might work.
it's starting to look so festive in the house. All the caladiums are set in there and it just brings an extra dimension of color or something. I don't know what it does when you bring in holiday plants like that, but it's beautiful. Um, now, I just realized that I'm out of one of my bird seed mixes that I put in a few of my bird feeders. So I'll show you the feeders that I have. We're going to install one of them today and hang a suet feeder, uh, and that's pretty much it. But I do need to cut a 4x4 post down and all of that, so that's probably enough for today. So right here, isn't this gorgeous? Now, it is dirty. This is from Gardener Supply, a copper-topped bird feeder here. This is the one I will put the sunflower seeds in. Um, so the top just lifts right off. You fill up that center tube and then they come out the bottom right here. And it just fits right down over a four by four post, which I already have near the chicken coop. These are the other feeders I have. So right here, we kind of rinsed them out at the end of last season when we hung them up in here, uh, but you can see they're already a little dirty. So we, we'll rinse them off. That'll give us a chance to let them dry anyway before we get more seed. But I've got those two up there, the kind of smaller ones. This one has got the little umbrella over it. And this one protects, like this little cage protects squirrels and stuff from getting in, which we don't have an enormous problem with, but it's kind of nice to have that. And then we do have this one right here. Um, so, and then I made that one a long time ago, which I could put sunflower seeds in that one, I suppose. But I typically like to put a little bit of a smaller seed mix in there so it can make it through those little drain holes in the pot. Do you guys remember when I made that? It feels like it was, what, three years ago or something? held up really nicely out of terracotta pots and saucers. I do have actually a couple bags of the black oil sunflower seeds, so that's what I will fill this one with. And then I have a suet basket and uh, block here that I'm gonna hang near a window, I think. Yeah, let me show you the post that this feeder is gonna go on. Do you see it right there? So we're by the chicken coop here, and we've got kind of this random arbor fence kind of thing that separates the driveway area from this brick patio. Here's Benjamin's garden and the Hartley. See that post? It's really doing nothing right there. There's a bracket. We did hang a hanging basket off of it this year, but you know, this bracket was here when we moved in. It's not exactly my taste, so I'll give it to somebody who wants it, but I thought that that bird feeder would be so perfect if we cut this down a bit so that I could reach the top of the feeder to fill it first, but I think it'll be just a beautiful touch out here. So the top here just lifts right off like that. Um, so I'm gonna take this bracket down and then I've got a level with a marker and I'm going to make a line kind of where I think that this needs to come down. I might go grab the feeder too and kind of hold it up before I make my cut. Um, whew, there's a spider in there. Dang, I didn't realize that, a jumping spider. Anyway, yeah, let me get the bracket off. Oh my goodness, you guys, why didn't I do that sooner? Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. Like just imagine, these are the um, Lady Gardener roses right here. Imagine when they're like all at their peak blooming. And then we've got a wisteria right here. You know, the garden beds are a little bit fall-esque at the moment, but oh just seeing that kind of peering out of a sea of beautiful plants with the Hartley in the background, of course, <laughs> wonderful. Let's take a look from this side with the chicken coop as the background. And then, you know, this season we had this full of annuals and sunflowers around it. I don't know what it's gonna be next year, but I just think it's so beautiful and so much better than really any hanging basket we've ever had hanging off of that bracket. You might have noticed I don't do a lot of hanging baskets. I'm not like the biggest fan of them. Uh, there are some beautiful ones out there, but I find it hard to find really natural spots to hang them. That was fairly a fairly good spot. There's also a couple of good spots. Oh, it's bright. Hold on. A couple of good spots right here. And then, of course, like from the pergola, you could hang them there. But the canopy from the tree is always so thick that it's really unnecessary. I always feel like on porches, you know, where you see big ferns, potted uh, hanging basket ferns and things like that. Those are gorgeous. Anyway, I've got some of the black oil sunflower seeds here, so I'm just going to get this filled up and then we'll go hang the suet feeder. I think it's low enough for me to 
fill it comfortably, we'll see. So this comes off, oh yeah, I think it's perfect. All filled up and ready to roll. I wonder how long it's gonna take for the birds to find it. Exciting. And with the extra sunflower seeds I have in my bucket, I'm gonna go ahead and give them to the chickens. Uh, black oil sunflower seeds are a really good supplemental thing to add into chickens' feed, especially going into winter because they've got extra fat in them. The oil helps add a little bit of extra weight to the birds, which is good going into winter, a little bit of extra warmth. And then it also helps with their feathers and things, makes them real shiny. Hey girls. You can see they've been feasting on some pumpkin. Okay, now for the suet feeder, which I haven't hung one of these for a really long time. I used to hang them every single winter when I was a kid, um, and I just picked one up recently. I thought it would be fun to try again. It's made from rendered beef, suet, corn, white millet, oats, sunflower meal, and it's good for year-round feeding. Somewhere kind of close to the house for easy viewing. The kids are gonna love it. These are really nice because one, they don't create a huge mess underneath, and two, you don't have a bunch of things sprouting underneath the next spring. So anyway, this should be fun, especially because we're so close to the windows. So that's gonna be it for today's projects. Just a little bit of this and that, getting things done. Uh, I do have those last four bird feeders to clean. I'll probably rinse those all out today, get them scrubbed down, let them dry, and I need to go pick up some more bird seed. But we'll get those all finished and filled and hung in different trees around the house. And then once you start filling them, it is very important if you're attracting birds to your space to make sure you have a water source, um, which we do have a couple of bird baths around. Once it gets cold enough to act actually freeze the water, we can put a um, little floating de-icer thing that you can just plug in. In fact, our fountains are still running right now. Uh, in the morning, if we've had a really cold morning, like we got down to 24 the other night, there will be icicles hanging down, but it's still running because it's a big enough reservoir. And then by midday, mid-afternoon, it's all melted and it's all just free flowing water again. So they do have a good source of that. Um, so anyway, I just try to make sure to keep up on filling the feeders throughout the winter once I start, and then I make sure that there's a water source. So. Anyway, super happy with that beautiful copper topped one though. That's my favorite part of today's projects. Well, I don't know, the Christmas tree in the Hartley is pretty fun too. Cladiums are beautiful. They're all fun. They're all fun projects. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.